Best wedding story ever. Mom told us that in between the morning ceremony and the evening reception, mom and dad went to Sears to buy my father tidy whitey underwear. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm Steph Jackson. I'm a wife, mother, and full-time caregiver for my mother who has dementia. If this channel seems like something that's interesting to you, please hit like and subscribe down below. Stay tuned till the very end of this video because I'm going to give you some tips and tricks from my own personal experience, do's and don'ts when you go to incorporate these photos into your routine. Today is my parents' 46th wedding anniversary. Got up early, snuck downstairs into my mom's room, into her closet and grabbed a couple photo albums out of there. I wanna to talk today a little bit about photo therapy. One of the reasons why I like to use photos with my mother is because it just lifts her spirit. When you think about photos, we typically take them at the high points of our lives, like a wedding or a graduation, the birth of a baby, we get out our camera and we take a picture because we want to remember that years and years from now. There's something really comforting about seeing a picture of something familiar. What I found with my mom is I will typically, a couple times a week, I will bring out one or two photos that I've pre-selected for special reasons. And she just kind of looks at the pictures and lights up. Something magical happens. She looks at them and there's a light bulb that goes off. And she smiles, and she wants to talk about it. It's a pretty special moment. When I bring photos into the room, there's something comforting for my mom about seeing pictures of her past. It also brings respite from some of the anxiety and depression and fear that's happening within my mother just to see those familiar images. Another reason why I like to incorporate photos is because the facial recognition. It's becoming more difficult for my mother to associate a face with a name and a relationship. I use photos as a way to prompt her. So oftentimes if we have a visitor coming, maybe we're having a party, maybe somebody's just stopping by to say hello, I will find a photo of that person and show my mom it and tell her who they are and let her know this person will be visiting, this person is your brother, this person is your nephew, this person is your friend from Texas. Facial recognition is really powerful and you can use photos to help your loved one recall some of the relationships and connections that they still have in their life. The third reason why I use photos is because it gives me something to talk about with my mom. Sometimes it feels like our conversations are very short and limited at this point. Um, she often says that she doesn't know what to say, she doesn't know what to talk about. When I bring in a picture, I make sure that I've carefully selected that picture so that it's associated with a positive memory, first of all. And then I typically will start by showing her the picture and telling her what I see and what I remember about the photo. This way it can give her a chance to sort of think back and it prompts her and gives her a reminder of maybe who's in the picture and what's happening. I've gone away from the phrase, do you remember? I realized about a month into this caretaking role that I was constantly asking my mom that question, do you remember this, do you remember that? And I kind of had an epiphany where I realized I am constantly reminding her that she can't remember things. <laughs> So I shifted my language a little bit intentionally. And so w when I bring photos in, I typically don't ask her, what do you remember? I typically will say, what do you see? And that open-ended question allows her to make observations. If she can't remember who the person is in the photo or where it was taken, it allows her a chance to just look and see and say, I see a bride or I see a beautiful bouquet, I see a beautiful veil. Um, it takes the pressure off of her having to remember. When you go to incorporate photos, plan for short sessions. Typically, my mom will last about five minutes tops with a conversation about a photo. Don't expect to have a 20 minute conversation. Keep it relatively short. Another tip is you should share your own memories too. There's something therapeutic even for the caregiver themselves to recall the memories associated with that photo. So don't be afraid to share your own stories. Okay, this is a big one that I've learned throughout this process. Sometimes my mom remembers things differently than I do. For example, sometimes my mom still thinks that my dad is alive. I used to try to tell her the truth and tell her 
what exactly had happened, but then I realized that it wasn't helping the situation. In fact, it was upsetting her. So what I've learned through my experience is not to correct my mom when she gets things confused, but just to keep connecting with her. And lastly, probably most importantly, let your loved one lead. If they seem uncomfortable, if they seem sad, if they seem agitated, if they don't seem like they're enjoying it, back off. Maybe it's the wrong photo, maybe it's the wrong day, maybe try again later. I'm really interested in what my viewers have to say. Please tell me maybe one takeaway that you have from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. My daughter and I are starting our next side project coming up in December. Please look forward to baby dolls and blanket drive. We are collecting baby dolls and bl soft blankets for dementia patients. I've included some links down below to give you extra resources about using photos with your loved one. As always, thank you for tuning in. Stay strong, stay grateful, and stay present. I'll see you next time.